On March 1st, 2013, I began to see all these purple flowers in the hills. So it's sort of a subtle purple. It's not very bright on the ice, but then again, most of the stuff in the chaparral is sort of dull like that from a distance. And as you can see here, the hills are literally covered with this plant, and they all appear to be the same species. I've seen these flowers all over San Diego this month, including on steep cliff sides and on mountains, and all sorts of chaparral communities lining the I-15 or the Interstate 15 freeway. Then while I was driving around home, I noticed these flowers were all around the hills too. So I made a promise to myself that I would take a weekend to go explore and find out what these are up close. The little cylindrical bushes here are actually of the same species as many of them bear the same flowers. I doubt those neat little bushes are part of the landscaping plan, but rather just shoot systems coming out of existing root systems, either from the wild bushes nearby or from root systems that survived when the land was cleared. I was under the impression that chamis or chamis or shami, as different people pronounce it different ways, was the dominant chaparral plant of this biome, but apparently that's not what this is at all. We now interrupt this programming for the obligatory rabbit stare whenever available. So when I finally walked right up to this plant along a pathway, I realized that what I was looking at was most likely Ramona lilac. In the fall of 2012, last fall, when I was hiking in Hellhole Canyon in Escondido, I found these plants by the hundreds by the hiking trails. The leaves were more of a yellow brown back then, but now they're sort of a lush green. I recognize the leaves immediately by the vein patterns. The leaves are small, ovular, and have mildly serrated edges. Flowers are actually quite attractive up close. They grow in these small dense clusters, but they appear to be more purple than blue or white as the online description suggests. I actually made a video on Ramona lilac earlier last fall, and you can look it up on my channel. The only thing I found remarkable about it at the time was that the wood was orange. At one part in my other video you can see this branch that's been sawed off and the inside is bright orange which is quite attractive too so during the fall or late summer you know this plant is completely deprived of water and roasted by the sun at that point so it's just hideous looking at that point and it's very sparse with its foliage its survival strategy appears just to be to take up as much space as possible and grow upwards and outwards to form a canopy to crowd out all the understory plants and other competing chaparral species and it seems to be very successful at what it does. And as you can see from the hillside footage I showed earlier, it is pretty adept at recolonizing from root systems or recolonizing through adventitious shoots. There's not much in the way of online literature on this plant. Perhaps only botanists and ecologists understand this plant well. The reason for that is probably because it's not a very attractive plant externally during most of the year. The way I finally identified this plant was I just bumped upon a sign in Daily Ranch Escondido, a long hiking trail that contained the scientific name for this plant and the name Ramona Lilac. Otherwise, I probably never would have figured it out, or it would have taken even longer. The literature states that this shrub grows to a height of maybe 2 to 3 meters, and maybe 1 to 2 meters wide, but in Escondido alone I encountered small trees of Ramona Lilac that grew to 4 meters in height and probably 3 meters or wider. I'm sure there are Ramona lilac trees out there that are much bigger than what I saw, perhaps never encountered by humans.